Hi, and welcome to this section, which is all about making and modifying matrices. So the things we are going to go through in this section is how to make and modify matrices, as the title suggests. We are going to learn to create 2D arrays, also known as matrices, handle attributes of a matrix. We are going to learn to specify an axis in an aggregate function like the max, the mean, and so on. So now we are going to learn how to take the mean of specific columns instead of mean of the entire matrix. We are going to learn a bit about Boolean matrices and how to use them. And we are going to learn how to work with missing values. In the exercise set of this section, we are going to work with weather data from Boolean, and this is saved as a 2D array. So you're going to have the opportunity to practice what you have learned in this section in the exercise set. I'm really excited to start working with matrices, so let's keep going. In this lecture, we are finally going to work with matrices. So what is a matrix? A matrix is a 2D structure, which means that we have both rows and columns. You can think of it kind of like an Excel sheet. So if a vector is the equivalent of a list, then a matrix or a 2D array is the equivalent of a list of lists. So here I have created a list of lists. And what I want to do is to make this list into a 2D array. This is done very similar to what we did in the 1D array case. So when I want to make my matrix, I write matrix equal NP array, and then I just plug in my list. So let me also return matrix. So now we have created our first matrix. So the way it prints it, it's very similar to how it prints lists. The only thing is that in the front, we have written array. And we can also check out the type of the matrix. And we get out that it's a NumPy ND array. And in this case, it's a 2D array. So in this course, we will use the words matrix and 2D arrays interchangeably. So now I have a matrix and what I want to do is to go back to list. So let me just quickly recall how it worked for vectors. So if you have a vector and let me just let it be the first five numbers like this and let me also return the vector. So here is the vector from zero to four. So if I want to make it back into a list, I can just use the list constructor and place in the vector and run the cell. And here we have a list. So if I try to do the same with a matrix, we can see what happened. So now we see that instead of giving me back a list of lists, we get a list of 1D arrays. So here you have the first element in the list is the array one, two, three, then four, five, six, and so on. So it makes a list, but not the exact list we are looking for. So the way to make it back into a list is to use the toList function. So if I write my matrix again and dot to list and run this one, we end up with a list of lists, which is the original object. You can also use the toList function on vectors. And it gives you back the same thing. But here you can really choose if we want to do the toList or you want to do the list constructor. So the last thing I wanted to go through in this video is how to get values out of my matrix. So if I have my matrix again, so let me just print it out. So it was the numbers from one to 12 arranged in this pattern. So let's say I want to take out a specific row, for instance, the first one. What you can do is to take the matrix and then just plug in the zero entry and run it. And here you see that we got the first row. So this is exactly the same syntax as for lists. Additionally, I can reassign the row. So I can write matrix zero equals, and then np.array, and then assign it to be a new list of the dimension three. So let's say I want three comma three comma three to be the first row instead of one, two, three. And if I run this, and write out my matrix again, you see that the first row now have been assigned to be free, free, free. So let's say I want to give out a specific value in my matrix. So I can use now the same notation as I would do for lists. So let me write matrix 
Then I would like to give out the third row and the second column. And if I run it, it gives out the value 8. But there is an easier way to do exactly this thing. So you can write matrix and then 2. And then instead of writing another pair of square brackets, you can use comma and then 1. And if we run this cell, we get out 8, which is the same entry as here. So this means that we can reassign specific entries. So let me write matrix and try to reassign the 7 here to be 100. So the 7 is on the third row, which when counting from 0 gives us 2. And it's in the first column, which when counting for 0 again becomes 0. And let me reassign it to be 100, run this cell, and then give out the matrix again. And now you see that instead of a 7, we have 100 here. So you might wonder, how do we get out the columns? So the easiest way to do this is to use slicing, which we will get more into in a later section. But for now, we will just use the notation. So if I have my matrix, then I can use colon to kind of tell it, take all the rows. And let's say I want the third column. So let me run this out. And then I get the array 3, 6, 9, and 12, which is the last column, 3, 6, 9, and 12. And note that when it gives out rows and columns, it gives me back a 1D array or a vector instead of giving me back a 2D array. So this was everything I wanted to say in this video about matrices. In the next video, we would go through the attribute of the matrix. So see you again then. Hi, and welcome to this video on attributes of a matrix. So in the last video, we saw how to make a matrix. And this time we are going to go through the different properties a matrix have. So remember, as always in this series, we have imported the NumPy package at the top of the document. So when Eirik talked about 1D arrays, he talked about a bunch of different properties 1D arrays have. So when you check the type of a 2D array, it's the same type as a 1D array. There are just some differences in the properties. So first of all, if I have a vector, like this, I can ask for the dimension of the vector. And that is ndim. And for a vector, the dimension is 1 because it's a 1D array or one dimensional array. So for a matrix, the ND array should be 2 because it's a two dimensional array. So let's check that as well. So here I have my matrix. So let me run this out and then I write matrix.ndim. And we get the dimension 2. So at the later point, we will go through ND arrays or higher dimensional arrays, like 3D arrays and so on. And they will have higher and higher dimension. The next thing we talked about was the D type. So the type of all entries in a matrix need to have the same type, same as for vectors. So if I have my matrix here and ask for the D type, we get that the type of each entry is integer 32. And if we ask for the vector, it should be the same. And yes, it gets integer 32. So one thing to note is that my machine might be a bit different from your machine. So you might get integer 64 instead of 32. So this have more to do with kind of the operating system and stuff like that. So the next thing I wanted to go through is the size of a matrix. So remember that the size of a vector is just the number of entries. So in this case, five, since we have five entries in our vector. So the question is, what happens when we do it on a matrix? So the size is always the number of entries in the matrix. So in this case, we get six because our matrix has one, two, three, four, five, six elements in it. So currently we have not gotten information about the number of columns and the number of rows in our matrix. And here comes the most important attribute in this section, namely the shape attribute. So let's write matrix.shape and run it. And what it tells you is that this matrix here have three rows and two columns. And if we actually write out the matrix, we can check. 
we have one, two, three rows and two columns. So one quick note is that the thing we get out of the shape is what's called a tuple. So a tuple is a Python data type, which is like a list, except that you cannot change the entries. So if I try to have matrix.shape, then I can take out the first entry, like in a list, like this. But if I try to reassign it to be one, then I get a type error. So a tuple do not support assignment. So let me delete this one. So one thing you might wonder is what happens if I ask about the shape of a vector instead of a matrix? So if I write that shape, then I get the tuple five. So if we go up, we see that here we have that the size was also five. So this shape attribute do not give us any new information when it comes to vectors. So the last thing I want to touch upon in this section is a bit technical, and that is how to go from a 1D object, like a vector, to a 2D object. So the thing is that you can represent this vector with just a 5 here as a matrix in two different ways. So first of all, you can write it as a column vector, or you can write it as a row vector. And sometimes it's useful to go from a 1D array to a 2D array by just viewing it as a row vector instead of like a one-dimensional thing. So the way to do this is if I write row. So what I want to do is to take this vector here and change the shape to a 1,5 here. And the way to do it is to introduce a new axis without introducing any new values. So if I write vector and in the first entry, I write new axis, which just creates a new axis. And in the last one, I write everything with this semicolon and run this cell. So now I can ask for the shape of this row vector. And what you see is that now the shape is 1,5. And if we look at the row vector, what we see that is that it's two set of parentheses instead of the vector where it was only one. So if you are familiar with lists, this is like having one list with one item, which is another list. So the reason for having two sets of square brackets is that you have a list inside a list. So one thing you might note is that, well, I took the np.axis in the first entry. What you can also do is to have it in a second entry. So let's do that as well. And this is kind of like having a column vector. And let me also ask for the shape of the column vector. And now we have the shape 5,1. And let me also print out the column vector. So now you see that you have a list of lists, but each inner list only contains one item. So the reason I actually go through this is that sometimes specific functions actually ask for 2D arrays. So additionally, when we go through broadcasting, this way to creating new axes comes into play. So this was all I wanted to say in this section. In the next section, we are going to go through how to change the shape of a matrix. So see you again then.